On August 23, 1945, at the close of World War II, I was born to Glenn and Louise Pugh. Dad was in the Navy and stationed at the submarine base at New Hampshire, Connecticut. At the age of three months, Mother and Dad packed up our belongings and we moved to California. We went to live with my grandparents, the Alexanders, in Santa Ana, California. While we were at my grandparents, Kathleen was born. Mother said I would keep peeking over the bassinet to see little Kathleen, but as much as I loved her, I was also jealous. Dad wanted very much to finish college, so we moved to Tempe, Arizona, where he enrolled at Arizona State College. For a while, we lived in a trailer. Bonnie was born in Mesa, Arizona in January 1949. Now my parents had three little girls, and mother would often dress us alike. Stephen was born in February of 1951. When he was about six months old, we moved to Strawberry Point in Marin County. This move was to our first very own home. It was a three bedroom house with a large living room, dining room, and kitchen. We loved it, and we had many happy memories in that house. I was in fourth grade when Patricia was born. I remember getting ready for school and dad coming into the house and announcing, we have a little sister and she was just beautiful and she won our hearts from the beginning. Each year, the school would have a strawberry festival. My class always did a square dance. After the program, there would be a festival of games, food, and things to buy. Our little neighborhood in Strawberry was the greatest. All the children on our street were good friends.
When I was in sixth grade, we moved to San Carlos. Dad had taken a new job with Ampex Corporation. High school was an adventure. I was so short it seemed like every time I rounded a corner at school I ran into a group of very tall boys. They never moved and I had to go around them. In school, I ran around with four or five girls who enjoyed the same things I did. Once or twice a year, my friends and I would stay at my house overnight and, on Saturday, get dressed up, hop on a bus, and go to San Francisco for the day. When I was in high school, my grandparents, the Alexanders, moved to San Carlos, and they were only about five minutes away from us. When I was a junior in high school, Granddad became very ill with brain cancer. To help, I moved in with my grandparents. Granddad was unable to speak or do anything for himself. I would sit by his side and talk to him. I learned to read his eyes and I seem to know his needs.
When I was a senior, I started dating a young man by the name of Ronald Post. He was a good friend and took me to the Golden Green Ball. My senior year went very fast, and graduation was soon at my door. I couldn't wait to be out of school, yet what was I going to do? I wanted to work in a preschool, yet with no experience except teaching the three-year-old children in primary, I found I needed more education. I spent two semesters at BYU. It was hard leaving my family and friends, yet I needed to be on my own. When I returned home, I was unable to find work in a preschool again. Mother came to my aid. There were about eight children between the ages of two and four years old that we knew and needed to be cared for while their mothers worked. She suggested that until I could get a job that I start my own school. Many children came through my little school and I loved them all. I didn't make much money so when a babysitting job came up I had to take it.
After a few jobs of tending children and doing housework, I returned to school at the College of San Mateo, where I studied to become a qualified teacher. It seemed for the first time I really enjoyed school. I was studying things that would help me teach preschoolers, and this was the love of my life. I was now 30, knee-deep in church work, still teaching beehives working in the stake with the unmarried special interest, and again directing another road show. I was also on the dance committee for the monthly singles dance at Redwood City. There, on February 21st, 1976, I met my husband-to-be, Joseph Wirth.